next speakers are uh, Obi Odu and Leif Longva from uh, University of Tromso, and they are going to talk about High North research documents. Thank you. Um, my name is Leif, and um, I will share this presentation with my, my colleague Obi. Uh, the High North research documents is a service that we that we launched uh, six months ago. Uh, it's, a, it's a search service uh, on, uh, on open access documents where all the documents are thematically relevant to the high north. Um, am I pressing the wrong button? Ah. I'd like to start over this, uh, the, 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 this map here to give you an uh, impression of what we're talking about when we're, when we're saying high north. Uh, you may think that you're uh, far north when coming to Edinburgh, all right? Uh, well, you know, uh, we, <laughs> me and Obi are coming from Tromsø, which is right here, uh, far north in, in, in Norway. And uh, this, uh, this, this line that you see here is not what we've invented. It's a, it's a definition that the, the Arctic Council has come up with to define the the north or the high north. Um, it's not a border that we keep strict to, but it's an indication of what is the interesting area for us to, 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 to deal with when we are looking at, uh, at the research documents on the thematic scope of, of the high north. Uh, so this, this map here gives uh, a, a, a rather different perspective on the, on, the, on the globe, on the north, than what we used to see. We used to see the north as the outskirts of Europe, the outskirts of America, the outskirts of Asia. But in fact this can be viewed as an, a region of its own. And uh, I'm going to talk uh, about the, the, the high north research documents that we, we, uh, we just uh, launched. The, I, go, I will go through the, the what and the why and the how, and, uh, and I will leave the OB to go uh, more into the technical side. Uh, and I will also finish off with a little bit of what we've achieved and what we've learned, and hopefully there's time to do a little demonstration on, on this service. So why, why did we do this? Uh, basically, uh, the High North has uh, gained interest on, uh, on both the national level and the international level, uh, politically, strategically, resource utilization, environmental, climate change is, is, uh, is very um, uh, important for the, for, for the North. If, if uh, temperature is rising, the North will probably be the area uh, very much impacted. And if you remember the map, the, the, the northern sea route to the Pacific is, is a much shorter route if the ice uh, um, uh, disappears or, or vanishes, it, it reduces. You may be able to sail from Europe to, to the eastern Asia through the northern route, which is much shorter than going through the Indian Ocean. So all these things are adding up to, to uh, an increased interest in the, in, on the north. And, uh, and uh, our university, University of Tromsø, is the northernmost in the world and likes to see itself as a university focusing on, on the northern issues. So we at the library uh, found it, uh, it's al always been a natural thing for us to, to work on, on, um, on research documents, research, research literature on the north. And, uh, and we came up with, uh, with uh, uh, this this idea, and of course there are many parties uh, interested in the north, not just the academic um, uh, ac academic and uh, and access to research literature is is an issue here, and, and the answer to that access question is of course open access, and uh, open access documents are also followed with metadata that are free to, uh, we are free to utilize. And that's how we came up with the idea, what if we try to analyze the, the metadata and try to extract documents thematically relevant to the high north. <coughs> okay, uh, <coughs> the high north is a, is a cross-disciplinary uh, uh, thing. It's, uh, so 
traditional subject classification doesn't help us. Um, and we, we uh, therefore want to, to, uh, to analyze the, the metadata to see if we can find uh, information there to extract a set of documents uh, uh, making up this this uh, search uh, database of ours. Uh, we uh, we um, um, we want to make use of what's already been done. So there are services out there, aggregators like Oyster and uh, and uh, Base, Base, which is Bielefeld Academic Search Engine. And they have been aggregating or harvesting open access documents from all over the world. And we don't want to uh, copy what they've, they've done. So we contacted the, uh, the BASA people and, uh, and uh, asked for a cooperation. And, uh, and, uh, and we were met with, uh, with uh, very helpful people. Anyone here from Bielefeld, by the way? Lovely guys at, at Bielefeld. Uh, so, all the metadata are free to use. We have been downloading, dumping all the metadata with the help from, uh, from uh, BASE uh, locally at our site, making, it able, making us able to, to do what we wanted to do, to analyze these, uh, these metadata. So, our little hypothesis, if we can select a set of keywords, um, and apply these keywords to a <coughs> to an algorithm on, on, on the metadata that we extract. Uh, if we get a match, then then the uh, the uh, documents are are uh, relevant to the high north. So the, the the list of keywords is sort of our key to the success here. Um, so the, the 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 list of keywords that we've uh, we've uh, um, Created uh, is, is uh, yeah, four kind of type of, of keywords: ge geographical names, uh, species names, species living in the north, uh, languages spoken in the north, folks in the north, and then we have a set of other keywords uh, giving us documents that we are interested on, interested interested of. Uh, so far, we mainly used English and Norwegian language. Uh, Keywords. So this is something that we need to uh, to uh, to uh, to develop into other languages because uh, the world is more than English uh, language, certainly more than Norwegian. Um, <coughs> uh, the keywords is of course uh, um, um, uh, there are there are challenges, there are problems with uh, with this uh, method of ours. Uh, some keywords give us not quite what we are looking for. Uh, the meaning of the keywords may be, may be ambiguous. So like the, the word Labrador, when we apply Labrador, we want to look for documents on the area of northern, northeast, north, northeastern Canada, uh, the Labrador area. But the word Labrador also means farmer or peasant in, in Spanish. Any Spanish here can confirm that. Um, and the word Sami, uh, that's the northern folks living up north in, uh, in, uh, in Scandinavia. But there is also a district in, in Burkina Faso called Sami, and uh, I guess there's, a, there's one in Gambia and one in Greece too. So there are ambiguities in, on, 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 on what these uh, keywords mean that, that gives us uh, a challenge that we need to, we need to uh, Specify more what what we uh, what we how we apply the, the the keywords, like combining Sami and language, Sami and people, and uh, and then get away with the the ambiguity. <coughs> uh, person's name, persons are person's name can be any any word. So Sami is also a common language, common uh, first name in, in 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 Finland and and also in Turkey. So we. Uh, when we apply the when we when we apply the keywords, oops, when we apply the keywords, we, we are filtering uh, only a selected set of metadata elements. Uh, we are selecting we are, we are filtering the oops sorry, 
the, the title element, the description and the subject element uh, in order to uh, reduce the risk of uh, finding people called uh, Sami, for instance. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, author names, contributor names can show up in description fields. Uh, uh, we don't have control of all the, the metadata bases harvesting, so garbage in, garbage out. Uh, okay, Newfoundland is another example. We're looking for literature on Newfoundland, but we're not looking for any document from University of Newfoundland, so we need to, to, uh, to um, modify that too. Uh, this is an illustration of the, uh, of, of the model. Um, uh, here is uh, Bielefeld Academic Search Engine. 34 million documents it says here. Well, it's actually more than 36 million now, approaching 37, I guess, uh, since this was made a couple of months ago. Uh, more than 2,200 sources they are harvesting. Uh, and we are dumping all these metadata locally with us. Then we're doing this filtering or extracting process on the metadata, running through all these sets of keywords that we are, have, have, um, have defined. And then there are two, uh, there are two uh, loops here. One set of the keywords, one subset of the keywords <coughs> is good keywords, gives us what we want, and those uh, matches that these get, give us are, are uh, moved directly into the uh, High North uh, database. <coughs> While another set of keywords we don't trust equally, <coughs> so we send them into a, a loop of manual control. So this is uh, this is an illustration of, of the of the model, and I will leave to Obi now to uh, to uh, speak a little bit about the, the the technical things that we did. Thank you very much. I will continue with we are live. Stop. Um, uh, uh, basically, uh, I will just talk about um, the high node system model. It just is uh, not very complicated. Uh, we have uh, we we divided into four modules, and uh, we have what we call input module, as uh, Leif have explained. Uh, what we do, we collect metadata from uh, Billefeld that base, and the. Uh, and what we do, we collect it, we store it into a database, uh, MySQL, that's what we are using, and we index it. And uh, the, the different modules are not independent of each other. Uh, after doing that, probably if we want to extract uh, the, the metadata records, uh, what we do, we, um, okay. ah, this is what we do. Uh, just uh, we, um, as I said, we store this and index it in all the records into MySQL database. And uh, we can also, the extract module, what does it do? Uh, what is it extracts the, applies the extraction criteria on the metadata. And the consequence is, uh, uh, as is explained, uh, is uh, classified into three uh, separate categories. And uh, we have uh, what we call uh, those metadata records we are sure that are relevant to high not. Um, the, we classify it, and, and the second one, those metadata records, we are not very sure that they are relevant to high not. And then we, we send it for manual control. There are some librarians, those who can really do the job. And the, the last one is those ones we, uh, we know that are not at all relevant to high not. We, we, then we put it aside or discard it. And the, we have the next module, we, what we call the index module. People who are used to uh, this space will understand what I will explain. And the, what happens here is that because the metadata records, those ones that are relevant to high notes, is inside the MySQL database. And what we do, we transform the, the records into um, this space uh, SMF format. And after doing that, we uh, we inject those records into uh, this space repository. 
Uh, while doing that, we can uh, add some uh, custom information into the records for us so that it can help us to facilitate uh, building of facets. Many people are used to facets. And uh, we have what we call admin module, administration module, and what does it do? Uh, we use it to add uh, those words, uh, or what we call keywords left mentioned, and uh, we use it to change the status of uh, records. Even though a record is, has been approved, and if we get information that is not relevant to high note, we can go there and change the status of the record. Or uh, we, we, um, we can use it to manage, because we do receive feedbacks from uh, end users that can tell us, oh, this record is not relevant at all. Can you people remove it? We use it, that is the administration module. We use it to um, manage the, the feedbacks reports. Uh, some of you might ask why this space? Can't we use other platforms? But we chose this space because we have been using this space for the past eight or nine years, I've forgotten, and uh, maybe more than that. Uh, and uh, this space provides end users with both a regular search interface and the uh, uh, faceted uh, search and browsing. And uh, because this space also provides uh, for creation of individual custom repository interfaces. Uh, and that's some of the reasons why we choose this space. And uh, we have done some job. We have extended this space on the, on, on the users, uh, end users interface. We have uh, extended it to, for us to, to provide mechanism for end users to send those suggestions on how to improve the high note services. And, uh, uh, to inform us about any irrelevant records or to inform us about any broken connection in the record. So we have, uh, as Leif said, we have implemented a version, what we call that, and it's running. And uh, we have uh, today more than 151,000 uh, uh, 151, documents we have extracted. On the and it's based on many different languages. Leif, continue. Yeah, so this is the version 1.1, one one, we've called it. We launched uh, six months ago the version 1.0, and, uh, and uh, this is uh, now, I guess, uh, a little more than a week ago that we've, uh, we have um, uh, uh, did the process anew, and and uh, and and uh, now we have out of the 36 million documents that uh, Basi is harvesting, we are left with 151,000 that are relevant to the high law. Hello. Um, and. Um, and uh, what we are em emphasizing these days is to, uh, to, um, to uh, develop the list of keywords uh, uh, further. Um, more languages, better keywords. And, and in addition to the 151,000, we uh, this summer have a, a graduate student going through the manual control loop. So she's uh, sitting there now, hopefully, and, uh, and going through those. So <laughs> some of the 5,000 will also end up in, in, in the database. Um, and uh, when we launched this, we, uh, we announced it as, as far and, and, and wide as, as we could, and we got quite a few interesting uh, feedbacks. Uh, this, this looks like it's going to be a superb resource as a northern and southern polar studies instructor, and on behalf of my students, I'm thrilled. So it's very nice to have, uh, such a, get such a feedback uh, like this. Here's, here's another example. And uh, this guy is also pointing to a, a uh, challenge. Uh, there is a broken link. And, and of course, not all the documents that we get from BASA uh, um, have links that are working. Not all the documents have uh, full text uh, uh, files. Not all, the document, not all the records have files that are, we are able to open. So there are, there are, there are these kind of um, um, 
feedbacks is is very useful to us to 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 um, to um, uh, find the records that are not giving an open access uh, document. Um, yeah. <coughs> so. Um, <coughs> Yeah, like I said, many, 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 uh, many use their repository for metadata only, uh, or mixed some rep metadata only, some uh, some full text documents, and uh, and uh, that would be okay if we if we if we easily could identify the records not giving open uh, an open access full text document. Uh, oops, the DC rights uh, element could be used if there is uh, in, uh, restrictions on the access, but it's. It's very seldomly used uh, f uh, f uh, by the repositories out there. And another is how, how to identify records without any full text at all. Um, I was listening to a, uh, a um, presentation yesterday from Portugal. They have a validator uh, um, at, on a national scale there looking for downloadable files on the record so that's uh, that's interesting we need to maybe give a tip to to uh, to the base people if they can apply such a validator and 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 thereby knock out the records without any full text <coughs> documents we're trying as good as we can to to weed out those with without any documents we want our database uh, high north uh, research uh, documents uh, database to be open access documents only. We have no intentions of making a bibliographic uh, uh, um, uh, service. <coughs> now this is a little look at, at, the, at the content. Uh, a little bit more than a quarter, 26-27% is, is journal articles. And about the same is text. Now text can be anything, but this is what the metadata out there gives us. And, uh, and uh, the metadata, this, this uh, list here is uh, uh, the Bielefeld's uh, uh, normalization of, 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 the, of the document types, because the document types comes in very many variations of, of, of uh, how they classify the, the, uh, the uh, document types. So they have done a normalization job that we, that we are utilizing. <coughs> quite, a few, quite a few images, uh, I think like 14-15%. Some thesis, some books, and this is a look at the at the link uh, at the language uh, distribution. When we've knocked out all the records without any language information, then we're left with very much English, uh, something like 85, 86 percent is English. French is in second place, and Norwegian is in the bronze medal place so far. But that's of course because uh, this this is uh, this is. Um, very much due to the, the fact that we are only applying English and Norwegian and Latin species name in the keywords. Okay, this is how it looks, uh, and uh, we'd like to give you a brief look at the uh, uh, this uh, how it looks live. Uh, it's it's D space, like uh, Obi said, and we've stripped it down very much. It's one one collection, one community, one collection. Everything is one collection in here. And if I do a quick search. If I write like this, pollute, just to just to pollute, and then I want them to start and get hits on pollution. If if you're interested in pollution, pollutants, anything like that, uh, we get two thousand two hundred thirty-one hits, and we are applying the uh, the uh, the facets of of the doc of the of the D space to. Uh, Oops, something's happening when I'm trying to point. Okay, what well you see over here, uh, this the topic there is actually the uh, the uh, the keywords. So you can see within this uh, uh, list of, of hits 2,200, uh, you can see how many <coughs> different keywords that are um, appearing. Uh, so that's a way to browse down on uh, on a thematic uh, on a thematic scope. Uh, you can view the, the, the various document types, uh, the date, and the languages. And the languages, too, are normalized. <coughs> um, yeah, okay, I think maybe I can, I can finish there, but if, 
just to show you if, if, we, if you're interested in things from the 1900s, clicking there, you're limiting to the 1900s, and, uh, and, and the date uh, facet is expanded to each decade, uh, more or less, in the, in the, in the 1990s. No, in the 1900s. Uh, yeah, one, one thing I'd like to show you if, you, if we open up here, if we open up here, we have a feedback uh, button. If this document doesn't give a full text uh, open access, if the, the, if the record is irrelevant, then we ask uh, the users out there to let us know by, uh, by doing like this. <coughs> Okay, uh, I think that's about it. Hi there, you mentioned the quality control sort of checking process on the keywords that you don't trust. Um, and you said you're improving the keyword stuff. Is there a quality control kind of process for the keywords that go directly into the system, or is that is that part of the process of what's going on at the moment? Uh, what we need to do is to to look at what we what what we find in here. So if we find a record, if we find a record like this, and we start to wonder why is this record showing up in our uh, database, then we have to look f uh, closer into that. And we can we can uh, we can identify which are the keywords giving uh, us a hit on this record, and we can analyze the the the, the keywords that way. Uh, yeah, that, that will be the way, way we have to to do it. Or or hopefully somebody out there is is giving us an indication this is not relevant, and we have to analyze why is it showing up there. Yeah. We believe this to be a rather new method to go through the, the uh, metadata to, to by the use of keywords like this. We haven't uh, come across anyone else doing applying this rather simple method. Uh, but we find it interesting to, to, to do it. But if other examples exist, we would like to know of, of them. Yeah. Uh, as I said, it can be adopted to any type of uh, uh, Thematical system also like agriculture or in any other field. 